looking to try to figure out who in the world could be a Messiah, I really realized after going through all the stuff that Satan didn't have the stones necessary to be God. So he has to do something that makes him like God, like in his image, because the Bible in Revelation tells you he's in the image. It's an image. Everything in there talks about image, image, image. But it also uses a word that is translated as icon. And we know that icons have to be famous people. So I'm like, okay, who in the world would be more a problem to bring, uh, uh, would be the best solution to bring back in our present day? And, you know, one day I was riding down the road, and I was like, oh, wow, because I had been doing some research on cloning, and I was like, who in the world, if I could bring back anybody in the world, who would I bring back? And it just hit me. I was like, oh, if I could bring back Jesus, then he could solve the whole problem. There wouldn't be a problem here. We could ask him how this all happened, and he was the Son of God. And I just got real excited. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, but if you use everything in a sinister way, then what happens if you had a capability of bringing him back? The shroud of Turin exists. The holy blood exists. The Holy Grail that contained the blood could be the Shroud of Turin. Why was it so important to the Arthurian legend? The same reason it was so important to the Templar who made sure it got into the hands of the Vatican. And who has got to be the false prophet? The person or the group that's going to be the false prophet will bring about a world religion. Who's at the head of that right now? the Vatican. Who has the shroud? The Vatican. What does the Bible say as far as revelations goes? It says that the false prophet will give life to the beast. What is a beast? We know in the beginning the beast was something like a serpent or whatever that did not have, let's say, a soul. And if you look at Jewish Talmud work, you find that there was something called a golem. And a golem was a beast without a soul. And I'm like, oh, this just kind of came together because if you can create flesh without a soul, then Satan can use it as a vehicle to ride in without having to fight against it. Because if you do a lot of research in, in possession, you know that a person can be exercised and you can get rid of the demon, just like Jesus drove out the demon. But if you've got flesh that doesn't have a soul, then you don't have this fight or possibility of eradicating it. So this made a lot more sense. Now, if, if you could clone the blood of Jesus and you could bring his flesh back to life, then his temple, and he kept telling the Pharisees and Sadducees he was going to raise up his temple in three days. And they thought he was going to, raise, he was going to build a temple back, the regular structural temple. Right, right. He meant his body. And in Daniel it says, the abomination of desolation that will bring back Jesus Christ at the second coming is the fact that this, this image is going to walk in the newly built temple there in Israel but he's going to proclaim that he is the Messiah. So if, if Satan could get mankind to build him the vehicle through cloning, and that image looked like the image on the shroud, and we have got the DNA capability to be able to determine the bloodline, that, which is so crucial, the bloodline to be able to walk into that temple, you have to be from the lineage of David. And supposedly in 70 AD, all those records were destroyed when that temple was burned. So the person walking in there and proclaiming himself to be King David's descendant would have to have a blood lineage. Well, if you do any research, you know that all these DNA, genetic kind of things that are going on, they've been able to find, like, Jews that live in Ethiopia and be able to look at their blood and tell who is, is who if they're of like these lost tribes. 
And if you, I did a lot of research in what Hitler was doing when he was getting rid of certain Jews and allowing the other ones to go free. And I found out the ones he let go free were kind of a Khazar Jew, which is a mixed Jew. He was getting rid of the true Hebraic lineages, but he was also identifying their bloodlines. Well, now when people are asking, you know, for Christians to give money to send the Jews back home, when these people go back to Israel, they are, they are taking blood samples of those people. And they are identifying these different little facets of what makes the Hebrew, Hebraic lineage, which was the true people who were supposed to get the real promised land back in the first part of the Bible. So the intent now is that we have the capability to identify this blood. And we have the understanding that this blood, if on the trail, could be a mixture of God with man. If that is correct, then that DNA has the capabilities different than anything that you and I have. But it would also have the Hebraic lineage that would prove that whoever is walking in that flesh could walk into that temple and proclaim himself to be of royal lineage and descent from King David. Now, all of this has been really popularized in the, the books by Dan Brown because we're going to say that instead of it looking like it's going to be a clone, that there is a blood lineage that came through the holy uh, royal uh, Merovingian bloodline. And that holy royal Merovingian bloodline is what the royal, uh, the royal, the British royal come from. And the most true person to that actual lineage has been Princess Diana. And the combination of her lineage with Charles's lineage to create a child is the most uh, perfect that's ever been. The problem is, is that their lineages have been manipulated. And I did the research on that to find out why they were manipulated and what they brought in. And so this goes into a whole other thing between the unicorn and the lion and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, it, it, it absolutely will make your skin crawl because you start seeing how the importance of trying to make something look right on paper before you actually tell somebody this is a cloned image and this is really the blood. It, it, it's all being brought together, uh, Rebecca, to make it look like that the person who will walk into that temple to proclaim himself Messiah will be walking in with the blood that was on the Shroud of Turin. Now, my, my research has led me to this understanding that when Diana was a virgin, she had to be chosen according to the secret society at 19. At 19, she had to be uh, in to wed Charles. They took Diana. They actually took her away from society. They kept her hidden out. They would not let anybody around her. And when she married him, she had just turned 20. The other interesting thing is, in 1968, the Sturt Committee took blood off the shroud. They had already looked at what it was, that it was a male, and, it, um, and so they knew that there was blood there. They were able to duplicate some of that, and it's been kept very quiet. Whoa, now, oh, now hang on right there. We're going to take a short break. Okay, that's kind of a bombshell. I'm going to let you uh, kind of go ahead. <laughs> you just, just it, it, dropped it, that it, it, bomb, it, it, and I wanted just to leave that bomb there for a minute. I was like, because I had to kind of assimilate that. Uh, because it, there's a lot, and it's just so much in this oh, book that is. I feel like it'll really help people if they'll read it, because it will really bring it all together. But we were talking about how important it was for, um, really, for the bloodlines to be as they were set up. And the other interesting thing is, is that um, when Prince Philip of Greece, who, he, when he asked King George for Elizabeth's hand, King George told him that under no circumstances would he allow anybody to marry his daughter unless they were of the order of Freemasonry. And so it's interesting to me that right now Charles is over.